fly fishing is really a journey through life. But what you find is that the longer you fly fish, the more your senses become aware of, of what's around you. You start to pay attention to the little details. And then you realize that it's not about getting to be a better fly fisherman. It's about being a better human and a better person. You kind of soak in the beauty of this. If that doesn't impact you, uh, you need to spend more time fishing. What I like about guides in the state of Maine is that it, it doesn't feel like we're all in competition with one another. Uh, we're out here for pretty much the same reason. We love the outdoors. Um, you know, conservation is important. Water quality is important. We're trying to send, send messages um, that this is a great recreation. Families can do it, single people can do it, girlfriends can do it, guy friends can do it, kids can do it, everybody can do this. That's what makes it enjoyable. Yeah, why is that important for families to do together? Well, right, it's, it's, it's time away from a screen. I mean, you're here, smelling, talking, interacting. Oh, dad caught a fish, mom caught a bigger fish. It's great, you, you can't beat it. I was raised the majority of my childhood up here at the uh, juncture of the Kennebec and Carabasset River in North Anson. Uh, I enjoyed my childhood there. It was great growing up on the river and uh, I built on that to become a, a main guide. Bucktail Guide Service is a full service guiding company. Uh, we focus on fly fishing in western Maine. You're not ever casting the fly, right? What you're actually doing is casting the heavy float line that this is the float line. That's where the weight is in a fly line. So as you can see, I'm casting the yellow line and not the fly. Bring the rod tip up, let a big D loop form in it, and then snap it forward. And you're just unrolling it. Try that. And I'm holding this out like this. Yeah, it's good. Feels good to do that. <laughs> just roll it out. Nice cast. Nothing wrong with that cast. Let it go down, right? There's a fish there. Somewhere, <gasps> there somewhere out there. Oh. <laughs> I thought you saw one. <laughs> we have a lot of independent guides. Uh, which started in the late 1800s with the first uh, main guide was a woman, uh, Fly Rod Crosby. That's cool. and that was her it, name, Fly Rod Crosby? Yeah, that was her nickname. And uh, she, uh, you know, there were that first year, there were 1,700 guides that signed up to be in the program. And so that's when the legacy started. Guys, a lot of time, are um, performance driven, where they want to catch fish, they want to catch fish. But women guides add a different element to where it's more about the journey. There are some, you know, I've caught some great fish with some women guides, but it's a little different message and I really enjoy that. And I try to mimic that journey approach mm -hmm. in my own guiding because it's really all about this. It's not about catching. That's enjoyable, that's icing on the cake, but it's really about getting out. So fly fishing can happen with a lot of different types of flies. So these are streamer flies and these imitate bait fish. As you can see, they have uh, marabou feathers, fluffy. That's a lot of action in the water. Um, some of them have um, beaded heads that will sink them to the bottom, but they're all made to attract um, fish when they're searching for um, other species of minnows, um, sculpins, smaller trout, um, you know, bait fish of some sort. The fly fishing community has really adopted the catch and release policy, which um, involves barbless hooks. And the idea is that um, the trout populations, um, you know, have been decimated in the past by um, overfishing, by, um, uh, frankly, the, the wood industry of floating logs in the river, which is a great heritage of Maine, but, uh, you know, it decimated a population. We want the trout population to come back. So by doing that, we're, we're saying catch and release is the way to go. So you take the barbs off your hook. You want to get them in the net as quick as you can. If you have the need to take a picture, everybody loves a good fish picture, no doubt about it. Take it quick, get them back in the water. It's just another um, act of conservation. What are some of the biggest threats to the water quality and things right now? You know, um, frankly, water pollution, that's the obvious answer. 
mills that are located on rivers, people that even own property inside a suburban area that think that um, you know getting rid of their car soap and dumping it into a storm drain, it can wind up in a body of water. We have to be aware that our impact on water quality can be negative. It is getting positive though. The Androscoggin in areas have been much cleaner. The Kennebec is much cleaner. But we have to keep going. You know, frankly, even within the fly fishing community, the monofilament that you have, you might not think dropping that in the water is a big deal, but it is a big deal because microplastics and how much they're polluting. Um, and you know, you can walk along and see gnarly messes of the stuff. So, but they are coming up with really cool gadgets that are trash collectors, which I love. Um, and uh, so, there's no reason for a person to snip a piece and forget about it. There are ways to collect that. If you don't have it, stick it in your pocket. So I think that probably feeds back into why it's important to have kids involved in this and because it feeds into how they view nature, care for nature, and understand their impact from a younger age. Right. We have to educate the youth. Without that appreciation, they're going to make the mistakes that we made. Did you find during COVID when people had to naturally be outside more truly, I mean, you're socially distanced fully, right. did that bring in new crops of people that... It, it did, and the interface between nature and, and human wasn't ready for that big influx of people. It taxed the environment. It taxed nature. Now it starts to be uh, people that are out there that thought they'd like it have maybe left for whatever reason. There are some people that have stayed, which is really important, right? We have a new crop of campers and hikers and fishermen and you name it, they're all out there. And, you know, that's important. But I, I don't think nature was, was quite ready for the amount of people that came out. But it, it, like nature does, it reacted well to it. Nature finds a way. Nature finds a way. <laughs>and see if you feel what millions and millions of other people feel, yeah. which is this peace and serenity that gets developed when you got a fly rod, you got the rhythm of the cast, you got fish out there somewhere, and it's great when you get them. You have to have patience here. You, what you do today on this river might not work tomorrow, but you may find a new way it works, and that is the adventure. At Native Maine, local is really all that matters to us. We source local where we can, and we take care of our local customers, whether it's restaurants, schools, or anything in between. So as far as like what we get from Native Maine, we love hyperlocal. We're so fortunate to have the best produce seasonally. Any local uh, amber dark maple syrup, we're going to use that as any sort of sweetener. We also use uh, Pineland Farms corn for our lote currently. We're a local business with local people, through local restaurants, and into the local bellies of all of our constituents in the state of Maine. Hi everyone, and welcome to today's Chef's Tip. I'm gonna be showing you how to make salted baked potatoes, either at home or on your open campfire. If you're at home, go ahead and get that oven preheating to 350. If you have a campfire, let that big flame burn down so you have some nice hot coals. Because we're in Maine, we love using local potatoes. We have some here from the farmer's market and pick your favorite herb. You can use rosemary, dill. I have some oregano from the garden. You can use anything that goes well with potatoes. Cut tin foil, one piece this big for as many potatoes as you have. So what we're going to do is take our potato, do a couple steam holes, 
Nestle that right in the tin foil. Take a generous dose of sea salt. Sprinkle that on there with a couple sprigs of whatever herb you choose to use. Get it in there nice and tight. If you're at home, put these in the oven. It's gonna take about an hour to cook. In the campfire, you're looking at about 90 minutes. Don't forget on the campfire, it's gonna be hot. So don't reach in there with your hands, find a big stick, or if you have tongs, but it's gonna take 90 minutes and maybe even up to two hours. So now we're gonna go ahead and throw these in the fire. So we're gonna play a little game of cornhole here on the campfire. Our embers are perfect. We're gonna go and place that in there. Again, that's gonna be about 90 minutes. And then you have some perfectly seasoned potatoes. You can find all of our chef's tip at platethesteak.com. We're getting there to sunnier days, being with the ones we love, and now with those you've missed. This is you remastering the art of life. And while you're getting back at it, we'll be here to help you master the art of money. Norway Savings. Live your life in color. This week's pantry tip is brought to you by Norway Savings Bank. Hi, everybody. Welcome to today's pantry tip. We're going to talk about cleaning and seasoning cast iron pans and the myths around that. When I clean my cast iron pan, I like to use hot, soapy water, clean out any debris with like a scrubby, and then to season it, what I like to do is heat it up. Here at the campfire, I've had this pan on the hot coals for about, I don't know, two or three minutes just to get it nice and warm. If you're at home, you can just put it on a medium to low flame. I'm gonna take a little bit of canola oil and then a good pinch of kosher salt, okay? Put that right in the pan and then I'm gonna get it back on the heat. I wanna use a rag that I don't particularly love, and I'm just gonna start scrubbing that pan, okay? Now the kosher salt is going to kind of act as an abrasive to clean up any food particles or any cracks in the pan, all right? And that's gonna make this nice and super smooth. Once you work this around for about, I'd say a minute or so, Take the pan, we're gonna leave it off the heat so it's cold, and then we're gonna just kind of wipe it all out. Once we clean it all out, we'll clean this with a little bit of cool running water, polish it up till it's nice and dry, and you'll be able to flip omelets in this. That's gonna be great. For any more of our pantry tips, just follow us on platethestate.com. Oh, the atmosphere here is exciting. It's, it's pretty cool. You won't find this selection anywhere else. Take four pounds. By far, we are the place that you want to go to buy the highest quality seafood that you can get. 90-some percent of the restaurants in this neck of the woods use harbor fishing for good reason. Quality is never a question when you walk through the door here. You're always going to find it. Welcome back to Plate the State. We are at the gorgeous Cathedral Pines Campground in Eustis. And Josh, what are you going to be showing us how to make? Well, what a great time that was with Scott. It was amazing. Out it was on my the water. first time fly fishing and that was, I actually kind of want to do it again. You were so great. <laughs> but I love Scott and the whole yeah. ethos and being in Maine and the catch and release. It's very, you know, important. So we went to our friends at Harbor Fish Market and we got some of this great trout right here. They cleaned it for me. It's like beautifully done. We're going to teach you guys how to cook this trout on an open campfire, which I can't wait to do. This was back in Boy Scouts, so I did this, right? Yeah. So we're super excited with that. Maggie's got some vegetables. We're gonna use some of our special pans and we're gonna show you how to really get that charred charcoal flavor out of some veggies without all the grit and the dirt. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna finish off with some a nice garlic and tomato sauce in the same pan as the trout. So I'm pretty excited. Yeah, it is great. And there's really nothing more main than being out in nature and making food that you just caught, if it's permissible wherever you are, or you just bought, our little secret, out on an open fire. There's something so like primally attractive to that. I'm so excited for you to show everyone how to make yeah. this. So we're actually gonna go ahead and start cooking the vegetables because those, weirdly, are gonna take longer to cook than the trout. So let's cover those up because the, the bugs are definitely starting to find that. Our outside studio kitchen. <laughs> What we're gonna be cooking here is so easy to make and you can also do this on your home charcoal grill at home. Perfect. Like, right? So what you have here, Maggie, is a little bit of kale, mm -hmm. right? Now, I've stripped off most of the kale. 
But why don't you go ahead and take this knife and you okay. can show the guests how to okay. take the rib right out. So we're just gonna take this big tough part right out. Yep, perfect. Mm -hmm. While she's doing mm -hmm. that, I have some great baby broccoli. We get everything here at the farmer's market. Uh, it's a perfect mm -hmm. you know, season right now. Uh, the broccoli, once we get it, we're just gonna pull the little um, florets off. Okay, so that's what we want. I wanna keep a little bit of the stem here because that like, gives the broccoli yep. a little bit of structure. Oh, perfect. perfect, yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, so we have that done. Now, go ahead and take our olive oil. See, there's no excuse. It's not just beans and franks when you're camping. No. You can make a healthy gourmet meal. Season it up with a nice, good amount of olive oil there. I'm gonna put some kosher salt, same with the kale. Nice. A little bit of kosher salt, give us some twists of that cracked pepper on there. Ooh. <gasps> I yep. get to use the fancy, oh, I thought he was gonna let me use it. Of oh. course you can. <laughs> You've had this, what, for 30 years yeah, since you became been, a chef? it's been a while. Yep. There you go, give that All a couple right. cracks in there. Perfect. Always season your vegetables, always. Right? Okay. Mother Nature does a great job at growing it. The farmers <laughs> do the rest, all we have to do is season it. A little salt and pepper. Yep, okay. perfect. Wonderful. Okay. And so hopefully at this point, your fire has been raging and then it's calmed down a little bit. And we also have baked potatoes on there, which you saw me doing in our chef's tip. All oh, right. Beautiful fire. Good job. <laughs> so when the, you'll know when the fire is ready, Maggie, when you can put your hand over the top and you can definitely feel the heat. It's like, it's like when you open an oven, right? Yeah, you can yeah, feel yeah. the heat coming out of yeah. an oven. What I have here is just a steel pan and I drilled some holes in it, just like a, if you have a carbon bit on a, on a drill, I'm sure everybody knows somebody that has a drill that can drill some holes. We're in Maine, right? Um, so I have these steel pans just on the fire here. Go ahead and take the kale and I'm gonna take the broccoli and we're just gonna kinda, you can hear that, that sizzle, nice. right? Sizzle, I was gonna say that. Okay, you can hear that sizzle on there. So right. outside of the potatoes, this is a meal that you can have put together pretty quickly, you know, and it takes so long to set up your tent. Right. And you're gonna be hungry after, so. And the best part of this is these pans, if we wanted to do this, this method, this will work right on your grill, right? Um, you wouldn't wanna do it inside because the oil will, will go into the, to the burner and that might catch fire, but on an open fire grill like this, that's okay. I love this. All right. Okay, so while this is cooking, we can go prep the, prepare the trout, right? Absolutely, okay. so, yep. So you just wanna give it a little, couple stirs just to make sure everything's cooking. Okay. And like you said, let's leave this and we're gonna have that charcoal flavor really come up. I love that. All right, All right let's go with that fish ready. Yeah. I'm starving. <laughs> So now we are getting ready to prepare the trout for the campfire. Go ahead and follow us on Instagram at Plate the State. And please share any of your open campfire cooking pictures that you have. We love seeing what you do, it inspires us just as much. Absolutely. So Josh, what are we doing? So the veggies are going, right? Awesome job on those, they're <laughs> cooking up. Uh, so we got the great trout here, okay? From Harbor Fish Market. Harbor Fish Market, they, they gave us some of the best <laughs> trout. So good. Um, so what I like to do is, in this method, you can do with a lot of different seafood. Um, sometimes people would add buttermilk to this before they dredge it in their dry mix. I like using just a little bit of whole milk, and then I like using sour cream. Um, it makes it a little bit thicker, yeah. right, than just the, um, the buttermilk, okay? And uh, the ochre sour cream oh, really, really has really that good. nice tang yeah. to it. Okay. And don't worry, we're not talking about proportions right now. On our website, platethestate.com, we have all of the recipes with more flushed out instructions. This yep. is just for you, <laughs> you to watch along and enjoy at home. So I got that. I'm going to add a little bit of salt okay. and a little bit of pepper. Famous pepper. Okay. <laughs> and once I have that, I'm going to take one of our trout fillets, okay? Uh, it's perfectly cleaned. Oof. I'm gonna dredge it in the cream mixture here, yeah. okay? And then in the dry mixture, this is just a little bit of all-purpose flour. And then I love using corn muffin mix, yeah. okay? Go ahead and dump that in there. All of it? Yep. Okay. It adds a little bit of like- Sweetness. Let a little bit of right? crunchiness yep. too, right? Go ahead and add- uh, It's our smoked, smoked paprika. Yep. That's kind of to taste, right? Yep, that's good. Okay. Okay, mix that all up good. Right. While she's mixing that, after you just want to like let a little bit of the liquid drip off, okay? And we're gonna okay. dredge it in the flour mixture. Okay. Okay, all through. Now you have nice and dry hands, so I'm gonna get this all up in there, shake it off, and lay it in there just like that. I'm gonna do one more so you can see. So you left the head on. This. Yeah, I left that. Okay. You don't have to. You can take it off. But we're camping, it's Maine, right? 
I'm trying to do my best by Scott to show him everything. Okay, so we're gonna put that in there. You can scare the kids. <laughs> Chase them around the campfire. All right. Okay, get this little guy in there. Perfect. Oh, those are beautiful. Okay. Oh my goodness, this is looking so right? great. Okay, so these, look at that kale. It's getting yeah. nice and crispy. And the broccoli, you can hear that nice sizzle. I don't think I've ever been so excited to eat my greens. Right? <laughs> I'm gonna take one of our trout that we got here. Okay. Huh? I'll lay this sucker right in there. Ooh. Oh yeah. Got that nice little sizzle. Now, the trick about a, a stove that we're cooking on the campfire here in that yeah. pan, it's hard to adjust your heat, Yeah. okay? So what we want to do is we want to get it in there, but we don't want it to burn, okay? If you notice that the trout is just percolating like you can see now, that's perfect, okay? okay? We'll be able to adjust the heat and move it around, okay? Just like that, because we don't want this to stick. We just want it to cook gently all the way through. We don't really want any burn marks or anything. And like because that. nature isn't naturally level, you're gonna have some <laughs> yeah, natural points where. Yeah, yeah. So we'll just give a little look at that. Ooh, Perfect, right? Getting that nice crisp on it. And that's what happens when you have a nice seasoned cast iron pan. Yeah. I'd say this will take about probably five minutes per side. Okay. If we were doing this in the home, like back at the mm -hmm. house, we would probably keep this on for about two minutes okay. for each side. Okay. Still the same milk and sour cream. Still a bit of that corn flour mix I in there, it. right? I We're gonna get it. that nice, you know, that nice little sweet crunch. And the on veggies that. are moved to the cooler side right now. Yep, so yeah. I moved the veggies off to the side. The kale's perfect, yeah. and the broccoli is like, oh my Ugh. god, the broccoli is excellent. That nice extra virgin I love olive oil it. and the sea I love salt it. really brings out it's the flavor of that. It's gonna have that smoky flavor that I love. Right. Yeah. So that trout's been cooking for about like four minutes. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull it off. Okay, and let's see what we got here. Ooh! Oh, look at Ooh, that. Ooh, so you get that perfect goldeny brown. That cornmeal is really crisping up. Golden brown, yeah. look at that. Campfire trout. <laughs> so once we flipped it over, and you can tell yeah. when it starts to cook that the, one of the fillets is generally gonna start bending back up. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna take a little bit of butter. Ooh. I love butter. <laughs> I love butter. <laughs> so we're gonna take a little bit of butter. I'm gonna put it in the pan, okay? And what's gonna happen is those milk solids are gonna start to brown up and we're gonna get that nice brown butter. Mm. You can see it start to foam right there. I love that. Okay. Brown butter and everything yep. is my motto. Put some nice summer tomatoes in there. And those are from our garden. Yay! <laughs> and I'm gonna put a few shaves of garlic. I'm a little afraid everyone's going to be smelling this and start coming running from all the other campsites. <laughs> we're happy to share, right? All right. Now we're going to give this, again, about another four minutes. Okay. Let those tomatoes blister up. Let those up. tomatoes blister okay. up a little bit. Let that garlic butter infuse, and then we're going to go plate this up. Yay! Please tell me this is almost done because I'm starving. <laughs> Perfect timing because it is. So as you can tell, this trout... And those tomatoes blistered right up in there with that garlic butter. Yeah. The kale's done, the broccoli's done. And then what I like to do is, since we're camping, Maggie, we've been drinking this great beer. I'm gonna pour a little bit of beer in there, nice. right? And that's gonna make a sauce. Ooh. Oh. And that's the main beer company that you like, right? Yeah. Look at that, look at that nice sauce it just Ooh. made. Right? Perfect. Look at that. Who knew camping could be so gourmet? Right? <laughs> okay, so let's go back to the table and plate this up. Ooh, okay. All right, I'm gonna give you some of this beautiful trout. Oh, I'm so Ooh, so we're having the trout, the kale, the baby broccoli, and then the salted campfire potatoes. Those that... are your potatoes! I know, I can't wait to try them. Right? So of course, any fancy campfire cooked dinner in the woods deserves a proper beer and wine pairing. Josh, what did you choose for yours? Well, we're camping, so I chose beer. <laughs> and I love Maine Beer Company Peeper. It's like really like, it has just the amount of acid yeah. that I need for fish. Super crisp, super clean, ice cold. It's gonna be perfect. I love it. And because it is the fall, we're leaf peeping. So Peeper, <laughs> perhaps peeper. is right here. And if you know anything about me, even if I'm in the middle of the woods, any excuse to have bubbles, especially when we are celebrating the season premiere of this show that we have been talking about for so long. So, long. so thank you so much for all of this and for showing everyone this incredible meal. Welcome to today's leftover tip. 
We had a great day yesterday cooking that beautiful trout from Harbor Fish. We made the baked potatoes, the broccoli, all that. It was a great time. Um, but it's very important to me about sustainability, stretching the dollar. I want to show everybody what you can do to utilize the meals that you had even for the next day and beyond. So what we have is a little bit of Maggie's baked potatoes and I just tasted one and that fire really gave them a really great smoky flavor. We have a little bit of trout left. So I'm going to put that trout right into our potatoes. There's a little bit of celery and onions just diced up. There's some eggs from our farm. I say our farm, it's more of like a boutique farm. We have about five chickens, but they lay the best eggs. So I'm gonna add a little bit of our hard boiled eggs in there. Some dill pickles. A Little bit of local mustard. Nice spoonful of mayonnaise and a squeeze of lemon. Not the whole. All right, we're gonna give this a nice mix here. And this cast iron trout potato salad is gonna be the best thing I can have because we have a bunch of people coming to camping with us right now. So I'm gonna put this in a dish right here. Here's some dill from my mom's garden. A little bit of cracked pepper, a little bit of sea salt, and that's it. For all of our leftover tips, visit platethestate.com and follow us on Instagram. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time. Play a little game of cornhole. You're gonna go ahead, get those in the embers. It's like Cheech and Chong right now. <laughs> yeah, it's like you did awesome with all that smoke in your eyes. Yeah. <gasps> I think somebody just jumped. Maybe not. You just scared the out of me. I'm like, there's a bear coming out of the woods.